guys, welcome to Cooking with Cook. Today we are at Hang Cross Village Butchers um, and I just want to introduce you to John Brim, the Hi. master butcher here. So today's the recipe we're going to be doing Moroccan lamb. So the first thing we're going to be watching is John break down the saddle to get the rumps of what we're going to be using today. So here we go. Okay John, so yep. here we are at, your at the block. So explain to us about the saddle first, please, mate. What have we got? What are we looking at at the moment? At the moment, we've got the, we've got the rumps, yeah. which is off the back of the hind legs. Can you just explain? Show on your body, John, whereabouts the saddle is, please. Okay, so it runs all the way on the back. Halfway half up. Lovely. And the rumps are? On your rump. Lovely. Okay, thank you. Right, so back down to the old okay. saddle. Yes. So we're looking at the, the end of it where the rumps lie. Yes. Okay. And... Uh, Take it away. Okay, oh. so we're going to take these chumps off. Okay. And there's a little knob of one there, so we're going to slice it down there. Yeah. We get the saw. Lovely. Always the saw, never a chopper. Uh huh. And why is that? Why? Because you get splinters. Splinters from the bone. You don't do splinters. Okay. And let's Lovely. Let's go through the vertebrae. Yeah. There we are, one chump. Lovely, so what are we looking at there? So we've got the chump either side. There's a chump on the bone at this moment in time. But Lovely. Gonna, but we're gonna change it into a lamb rump in a minute. Okay. Okay, and we're gonna start that. Now when people order lamb rumps, in, in, in what, what sort of size are we looking at? About eight ounce? Eight ounce. Okay, eight so ounce. we're gonna get a couple of rumps well, out of a, each you, side, would you say? We can do that, we can do that. Or you get a perfect one with a little bit of trim yes, to it. absolutely. Lovely, okay, cool, excellent. Okay, so we start boning these out. Lovely. Tight to the bone. Lovely. So there what you are you doing? Just chasing it round the chasing side, round the bone. Let the, let the knife do the work. Okay. Just follow the bone. And down. Excellent. And there's one at this moment in time. Yeah. Let's do the second one. That's it. Now obviously you guys would do this for people. They we're not expecting to sell the whole saddle on the bone no, for not people a to butcher this for. But obviously it's interesting for people to see. Absolutely. Where it comes from. That's it. Lovely. Now, what, just John, before you yes. tell me about these two rubs, what's happening with that? Tell, now, now what I'll do, I'll trim a little bit of meat we can get out of it. Yeah, okay. Which we make into dicing or mincing. mincing. Lovely. Yeah, so mincing. it goes into the mince. Oh, yes, everything goes Lovely. through. Lovely. And then the bones just still sell as well we as do. lamb we bones, cut the obviously. Bone. Cut the bones out. Okay, for, for people to use as their lamb gravies and yep. their lamb Stop. stocks and whatnot. Absolutely. Excellent. Okay, so let's have a look at one of these. So if we can... Okay, there's a nice little lamb run at Love this moment, it. but now I'm going to trim the, the fillet out. Yeah. I'm going to take the skirt out. Now, is that, a, is that what you'd call a pencil fillet, is it, no, or not? not? That's no, not that's the pencil. Not pencil no. no, no, okay. That's the fillet. No, the that's pencil just, fillet is at the, at the other side. At the other end, yes. right, okay. So we're going to whip this off. Take the fillet out. Take the skirt out. Okay. And then we square the lamb rumps up. Take one, all this trimming goes into mince, sausages, burgers. So there's no, absolutely no waste no. whatsoever. Not at all. Not Excellent. At all. Square it off. So yeah. there's, there's all lamb, lamb rump there at the moment. So, so would you get two out of that, would you say, John? Yeah, I think you will. Yeah. So we could go like that? Yeah. Now I need four okay, for so tonight's recipe. Okay, so, so we do two now and we're doing another two. Lovely. So let's get a little close in, John. Yeah, so no problem. And at this moment in time, lamb's good because it's, it's the spring lamb. So, so you've done you've done a few of these lamb rumps before, haven't you, John? Yeah. Would you say you've done a few few thousand? Probably, probably few million. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we are. Excellent. I can't wait for my dinner tonight. Lovely. Look at them. Beautiful. Can we flip one over so okay, we can see absolutely. the we yeah. can see the cover, cover on there as yeah, well? Yeah, got a little bit of cover on it. So it's got a nice little bit of fat. Yeah. Like so. So we scratch them up if you want yeah. to scratch them up. Yeah. Nice one. Okay, yeah, can you just score one up so okay. we can just say, obviously with yeah. John's got his nice razor shot, we'll sharp like knife. I'll do a more steam set stage, you do yeah. it you get Oh home. yeah, well, that's That'd very kind right. of you, thank that's you. That's what kind of guy I am. <laughs> just don't tear the bus, okay? <laughs> you go, Beautiful. Enjoy your meal. And that's fantastic. Now, obviously, just looking at them, which, as you can see, they look like little, they are obviously little lamb rumps. Yep. And, and now they cook up, John, I mean, in your experience, and eating like rumps, yes. it's very steaky, isn't it? Yes. So it's not like something you 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 sort of cook it as as people are going to see in the recipe later. Yes. But when you cut into it and eat it, it's like eating a steak. Oh, absolutely. Bit blood. You want it yes. bloody still. Yes. Well, um, like you say, it's the 
word in is it's, it's a rump of lamb, so it's like a rump sure. of wheat. So, yeah, it's a nice firm piece of meat. No, nice. fantastic. So now what we need to do is get these onto our uh, website. So yep. So not only can people see the recipe, but also can buy these online. Absolutely. John, thank you very much. Welcome. Appreciate that. Appreciate thank that. you. Enjoy. Thank Cheers. You. Okay guys, so we're back from the butchers where we've uh, grabbed our lamb rumps where John Britton's shown us how to prepare them. So if you come down over here, we're gonna see the fantastic Moroccan marinade that we're gonna make for these lovely four lamb rumps that uh, we've got. So the ingredients we need is some olive oil, some ground turmeric, a couple of cloves of garlic, some ground cinnamon, some ground cumin, some coriander seeds, and some salt and pepper. So very, very simply, all we're gonna do first, using a pestle and mortar, is grind down some of these coriander seeds. So about half a teaspoon-ish goes into our pestle and mortar. And then we just give it a nice little grind, like so, just to bring that Lovely coriander flavour to our marinade. Lovely smell. And then next thing I'm going to put in there is about half a teaspoon of salt, about half a teaspoon of pepper, and then give it another nice little mix around, give it a little grind down. And then the next thing I'm going to use and incorporate into this is the garlic cloves. So again, all I do is take the little ends off, like so, get rid of them. Give the garlic a good little bash, little swish like so. Skins off. Like that. Give it a quick little chop just to help it slice through. Incorporate that into my pestle and mortar. And then I'm going to take my, about the ground cumin, about a sort of half teaspoon of ground cumin. And then half, about a tablespoon of cinnamon. Obviously use a spoon to measure it if you feel like you can't measure it into your hand, but always measure into your hand first or into the cap so it doesn't go too much into your pestle and mortar. And then about half a teaspoon of turmeric. And then, just wash your hand, incorporate all them lovely flavours into the pestle and mortar. I'm going to bruise down the garlic. Okay, mixing around like so. And it doesn't matter if there's big bits of the garlic still left in there. It's purely for the marinade. But just give it a nice bash. Move all them spices around. And I can already smell that beautiful Moroccan flavors. And then all I'm gonna do is incorporate a little bit of oil probably about a tablespoon of oil in there and then carefully paste it around in the pestle and mortar until you have a beautiful Moroccan-y paste. And once you've done that, grab yourself a bowl and then take the paste out of the pestle and mortar, use a spoon, and now it comes. Can you smell that? Okay. Beautiful. And then very, very simply, all we're going to do is take the lamb rumps and get them in the bowl with the paste. And this is where it gets messy now on your hands but get that marinade all over them lambs. 
lamb rumps and then move it all around like so. Use gloves if you don't want to stain your hands up and have turmeric fingers like me. But massage that paste all over like so. And then when you feel that you've got that all nicely over the lamb. Oh, you can see the colour of the turmeric in the, in the marinade. And when you've got it all over, like I say, quickly wash my hands. And then we grab a little bit of cling film and cover the bowl and the lamb rumps like so. And that will then go into the fridge and we will leave that for a good four hours before we even think about cooking it. So come back for the next stage. Okay guys, so the next step is to make our fantastic Moroccan couscous to accompany the lamb. So if you come down over here, you'll see the ingredients we've got. We've got a small bunch of spring onions, which have been topped and tailed slightly and peel, take out the outer leaves if they're a little bit dirty. We've got a small bunch of fresh coriander, some fresh garden mint, just a small pinch from the garden. We've got some dried cranberries, which are gonna give it a really nice, sweet, intense flavor through the couscous. We've got one lemon, which has already been uh, microplaned just so we could get the zest. And then we're gonna squeeze the juice um, so that you really get that real nice, strong sort of citrusy um, punch through the couscous. We've got red pepper. We have a pomegranate, which I'll explain in a minute. And we have some chicken stock, some olive oil, our couscous and a little bit of turmeric. And very, very simply, how I do this, my, my way of doing my couscous is basically make a little bit of chicken stock in a mug from some boiling water in the kettle, pour it over the stock cube, your chicken stock, about three quarters of a mug, and then using a fork, just break down the cube so it turns into a nice little rich stock. And then I take about a teaspoon of turmeric and I just sprinkle that over the couscous and then just using a fork just move that all over like so not only will that give it a nice little peppery turmeric taste but obviously it gives it an, a little more vibrant yellow to the actual couscous so nicely mixed in like that and then take your stock and pour it straight over the couscous and give it a little shake like so and leave it aside now a lot of people then cling film it and let it sort of sit aside while it's absorbing i don't feel it ever really needs it personally so I just let it sit while we prepare all the things that are going, all the ingredients that are going through the couscous, all the lovely flavours and aromats. So all we're going to do is prepare these. So let's first just get the spring onions nicely sliced for a nice onion kick through the couscous and a nice bit of greenery. And as you can see, I'm slicing on the angle again just because it makes it look a little more attractive through the couscous. And then the next thing we're gonna prepare is the pepper. So same with peppers, straight in half, the old trick, thumb inside the pepper and put it back on itself and remove the top, pick out any little bit of white bits, give it a little tap so it sort of cleans the pepper out repeat the other half, thumb in, pull out, little tap, and then back onto the board. And then all I'm gonna do is quarter them peppers, 
clean them up carefully, not wasting too much. Remove the white, like so. Oh, a little bit for the floor, didn't see that. And repeat, remove. And then we're gonna have a nice dice of pepper going through this. So let's remove them bits into the bin. And then all we do, slice them down into little buttons like so. And repeat. And then last one, like so. And then all I'm gonna do, probably in two bits, make it easier. And then turn them like so, and then run your knife so you get a nice little dice of peppers running through. And don't be too precious, don't worry. They don't have to be perfect. And then same again with the other half. And then set that aside. Now you can sweat that down in a little bit of oil if you want to soften them. Personally, I like the crunchiness of the pepper going through our salad, so I'm going to leave that as it is. The next thing is taking our pomegranate. Now this is where it can get a bit messy. Now I've obviously prepared already one half of the pomegranate. So if I just grab a little bit of cloth, a little bit of kitchen roll, great little trick this, wet a little bit of kitchen towel, put it down, grab a board, put it on top of the kitchen towel and it stops the board from moving. Now there's half of the pomegranate seeds I've already taken out of one half. So I've literally just cut it straight down, which exposes the pomegranate. Be careful, this doesn't juice out. I'll turn it over and I'll put my thumbs like so. And just eke out the seeds. And as you can see inside, it's almost like a honeycomb texture. Oh, I'll try and keep some of them on the board. And then all you're doing is using your thumb to encourage them out of the pomegranate like so and then once you've done that and obviously under normal circumstances I'd go for all of that but just for speed I'm only going to do some of it but then you go through the pomegranate seeds making sure that you've removed any of the innards any of the white bits and then they can be incorporated with the rest of your seeds. Well, let's just get rid of that for a second. Now, next thing we're going to do is now come back to our little couscous and grab a little fork. And now, using the fork, give it a good fluffing up your couscous. So if you move it around now, you can see that color as well from the turmeric, just gently break the couscous down. It feels like it sort of sets, if you can see what I mean, but you can encourage it back into its little, little balls as it were. So once you've fluffed it and you've taken it from all off the sides, off the bottom, I will then encourage a little bit, a nice glug, of olive oil in there which helps it from sticking as well so a good tablespoon maybe two and it gives it a bit more of an oil base onto that couscous so there we have our basic plain fluffed up couscous which can be used obviously in salad like we're doing today or it can be reheated later if you were serving it hot okay so now that we have that, I'm now going to incorporate some of these ingredients in. So I'm going to now put our pepper straight in, our spring onions, our cranberry seeds, uh, cran dried cranberries even. And then finish it off with the lovely pomegranate seeds. Squeeze a nice little bit 
of the lemon juice. Always keep the cups up that way, keeps the pips inside. Nice squeeze, plenty of lovely lemon juice into that couscous. Lose them, wash my hands quickly. And then just to make sure there's some authenticity of that lemon in there, a little bit of that zest, which has been microplaned. A little quick chop through, get that incorporated in there. And then finally, all we're gonna put in now is a little bit of herbage. Now, for my couscous, I'm gonna use a lovely little bit, as I said, of garden mint. That's lovely spearmint flavor. So just ball it up into my hand, like so. Push your knife up against it and run your knife through, like so. And once you've done that, a quick chop chop. Oh, beautiful. On top. And then the same, probably with my one of my favourite herbs, as I always say, lovely coriander. So again, repeat the process. All I do is ball it up into my hand like so, down on the board, run my knife through. Like so. Chop, 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 chop. And then it goes into the couscous. Remove the, the board away like that. And then all I need to do is incorporate all of this together now. Like so. And then as I pick it up and look at that lovely, look at that lovely colors and all them lovely flavors. Oh, looks good enough to eat, Mary. what do you think? Very yummy. So. People can put what they want in it really, can't they as well? Cause you know, you said about coriander, not everyone likes coriander. Yeah, I mean, if there's something there that you don't particularly like, yeah. um, then obviously you can replace it. Um, so with the herbs, if you don't like the coriander, just keep the, just do the mint in there. Yeah. If you don't like mint, just have the coriander. Yeah. That's the good thing about uh, couscous, isn't it? You just literally put on whatever you want. It is the most versatile thing to play with, couscous. Oh. Um, and if you follow the simple steps of the, the hot stock over it, leave it for a, a good four minutes while you prepare all the ingredients, and then in it goes. And it is the Welcher Oyster. Now, the proof is always in the pudding. So let's have, get a little bit of everything there. And Mary, open up. Oh no, I'm not gonna. Mm. Now don't talk with not. your mouth full. Well, Let me have I'll a little taste as well. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm. Beautiful Moroccan couscous salad. Now can be clean filmed over, set aside or put into your fridge until you need it later. Come back for the next stage. Okay guys, so for the next bit, we're gonna be making our fantastic little salad that's gonna be going with the couscous and the marinated lamb. So we're gonna be making a watercress, feta, broad bean and toasted pumpkin seed salad. So very, very simply, we just need, again, a nice little pinch of garden mint, some lovely fresh watercress, which has been washed, um, a nice little block of feta cheese, some olive oil, some broad beans, which I'll explain in a minute. And over here, I've toasted, dry toasted, in a frying pan, the pumpkin seeds, just to color them up, pop them slightly, bring out that lovely flavor out of them. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do over here is if we need a nice big bowl, and in that bowl, I'm first gonna put our broad beans. Now, in this recipe, I've said that we're gonna be using frozen broad beans, okay? and literally take them out of the freezer, put them in a bowl, boil a kettle and pour boiling hot water over the broad beans. Let them sit for about a minute. Now, once you've done that, if you come over here, you'll see, now this is the, this is what you're actually after. You're taking them out of their shells, if you like, out their skins. And so that you get the beautiful, vibrant, green, meaty flavor broad bean through this salad. And if I, if I show you 
how simple it obviously is. All I do is pinch one end, like so, and then squeeze it, and then it'll pop out, and then to remove the uh, outer side to one side. Give it a nice little squeeze, like so, and then it'll pop out. Really, really simple. So the first thing we're gonna do is put them broad beans into our bowl, which go there, like so, and we disregard the outer skins, which we don't need. Now, once we've got our lovely broad beans in there, I'm now going to put that to one side, grab my nice little bunch of mint again, give it a nice little chop, so you get that lovely mincy flavour through the broad beans, giving it a lovely gardeny broad bean taste. And once you've got your mint, throw that over the broad beans. Next thing we're going to do is take my feta cheese. Now, you don't need to use the whole of the feta. Um, you could probably get away with doing half a block, but we're all quite cheese fanatics here. So I'm gonna strip the cheese down into little blocks like so. And then give it a bit of a sort of oblong dice. Now it will crumble a little bit, but don't worry. And then carefully pick that up and just gently break that, flake it up a little bit over the broad beans, over the mint. Like so, and I'm going to take that over there, and then what I will incorporate into that bowl, if I bring it over, is a nice little bit of olive oil, good glug of oil, and then grab yourself a spoon, and just carefully mix them, broad beans, mint, feta cheese, and oil, all nicely, gently mixed, like so. And then, as I said, in the pan over here where I've toasted some lovely pumpkin seeds with no oil, it was just dry fried in a pan, just to get nice and toasted, as you can see. Have a smell. Mm, yummy. And then my seeds can go in the bowl. And then next, is the watercress. Now, you can, some people like to pick the bigger stems off the watercress, pick it down. Um, why, I don't know. All the good, all the goodness is in there and it gives it lovely texture. So, but what I do try and do is just pick it down a little bit. So it's more manageable when you're putting it in your mouth. And repeat that all the way through. Like so. And then the last little bit like that. And then all I'm gonna do is then taking my spoon nice and carefully, just turn it all over, get all that lovely flavor, as I say, of the mint oil, feta, pumpkin seeds, all over that lovely watercress. The oil has dressed it. I'm not putting any acidity in there, it doesn't need it. I want this just true to its own flavours. The couscous will give it a nice punch alongside this. And with that beautiful marinated lamb, it'd be a meal fit for a king. And then transfer it into a smaller bowl, like so. So if we pour, look at that. Beautiful. Don't waste any, get everything out. I love anything with feta in. Yeah, well, it's beautiful and it brings, feta's quite salty, so hence you didn't see me season. You don't need to season when you're using feta. Um, brings its own seasoning to it. And then all I'm gonna do is now set that little salad aside whilst we go on to the next stage, which is cooking our lamb. Lamb out of the fridge now, and if you come down over here, you'll see taking the clean film off, and we've got our lovely marinated Moroccan lamb rumps that have just been sitting in the fridge, creating all that lovely flavour. 
And all we simply need to do is have a fork ready, a little bit of oil over here, and a frying pan on about sort of like three quarters heat, uh, and then a nice little splash of olive oil, not too much. I've got my oven on uh, about 200 Celsius, and all we're gonna do is now seal the lamb rumps and get all that lovely, beautiful marinade paste coloring up all around that lamb rump. And always go skin side down first, so it renders a little bit more of the fat out in your pan like that. Now, while they're coloring up, move them around a little bit. Like so. And if I just turn it over so you can see what it's doing. Lovely caramelizing, that cinnamon, cooling, the coriander, the garlic. How's that smell smelling, Mary? It smells really, really nice. So just keep lifting them a little bit, little shake. Keep them on the move. I'll turn my heat up a little bit just to speed it up. And then once you've got a nice little bit of colour on the skin side, the fat side, you can see them slowly tightening up a little bit, the rumps. And then now I'm just going to flip them over using my fork onto the other side. Like so. Move it around. And you want to seal all that flavour. You don't want the idea of sealing meat when you're doing something like this is to keep all the flavour and the juices inside the meat. So once we've done that, and as you can see now, that's nicely sealed, it's nicely coloured. We'll turn that off. I'm now going to just transfer it onto a baking sheet. Don't waste any of that fat and that flavour. And then skin side down, flip them over so they're back on their skin. And as I said, the reason doing that is because it renders out the fat a little bit more. Spread them out on your baking sheet, a nice big baking sheet. And then all I'm going to do is pop these in the top of the oven, as I said, on 200 Celsius, straight in there. And I'm gonna give that about sort of six minutes. Now, if you cook it for about six minutes, oh, if you cook it for about six minutes, it's gonna basically come out and rest for about four or five minutes. And then you're gonna get a sort of real bloody sort of lamb steak texture to it. Absolutely stunning. Now, if you prefer your meat a little bit, more cooked then obviously just leave it in for that lo little bit longer so if you cooked it for 10 minutes you're going to go for a sort of like a medium sort of not very much blood to it um, and cooked thoroughly through so i think we're going to go sort of in between sort of it being a little bloody and nicely cooked so there's no squeamish people in there is there mary <laughs> okay so come back in six minutes okay so now all i've done i've left these now they did end up having about eight minutes in the oven. And then I've turned the oven off, opened the door, and I've just let them relax for a few minutes. Now, probably about four minutes relaxing, because if you imagine when you cook the lamb rump, the fibers of the lamb tighten up. And then by when it comes out of the oven and you let it relax for a little bit, the fibers just open up slightly, relax, and then you have better tender meat. Okay, so let's take these lovely little lamb rumps out. And if you come over, Mary, and have a little, if we have a little squeeze on it, you can see that it's like, almost like a medium rare steak. When you push it, it's quite spongy. Can you smell that as well? Mm. How beautiful does that smell? And then, as I say, if you have a nice little pinch, absolutely beautiful. Now they should slice and they should bleed nicely. They have a really nice blush to the lamb. Um, and as I said, as, as I said earlier, you know, I'm not repeating myself, but if you, when you see me slicing this and you think it's a little bit on the rarer side for yourself, obviously just that little bit longer, or even just letting it relax for that extra four or five minutes will carry on cooking. Um, you don't have to take it out and it doesn't have to be screaming hot and then quickly serve it. Just let it relax, okay? So let's take one. And so if I can just grab one of these. We're going to put it on our board, like so. 
And then I'm gonna use what we call our pastry knife. Now it's got little teeth, almost like a carving knife, and it just is absolutely perfect for this. Now, all I'm gonna do first, now you can see the grains of the lamb, and I'm gonna carve with that. But I'm carving slightly at an angle, and I'm trying just to take a little slice like that. Like so. And carve towards yourself, keeping it nice slices like that. And look at that, beautiful. And carve it into a good sort of one, two, three, four, five, about six slices on about a 200, 220 gram lamb rump. And you obviously have got all that lovely bit of fat that surrounds it. You've got that bloody meat, which is beautiful. And then just let it sit there for two seconds. Now, all I'm gonna do is take just a little pinch of salt on top of there, and then plating up. Now, plating up, and as I was just pointing out something as well, what I've done here, uh, much to your disgust, no doubt, Mary, I've put a tea towel underneath my board. Now, if you were carving three or four, obviously you can imagine that the blood does come out and it starts dripping, so it's always good to have something to absorb it. Mm. Right, so, plating up. Okay, so we're going to take this beautiful broad bean feta, watercress, toasted pumpkin, uh, pumpkin seed salad, and put a lovely little mound on the plate, making sure that you've got a bit of everything there. Get a little bit of extra feta on there. Make sure you've got some of them lovely seeds and the broad beans. And then we're going to take a wonderful Moroccan couscous with them lovely pomegranate seeds in there, Cr dried cranberries. And just put a nice little mound next to your salad, like so. Look at that. Whoa. Lovely colours. It is, it is. And this is a lovely summery dish as well, you know, for a dinner. And it's quite light. And then all I'm going to do is then take my lamb and I'll just take the bit at the back and I'll slightly put it on like so. Boom. And just fan it out nicely on the top. Push it down just gently. Last little bit. And then move the board over to there. And guys, I can't say simple than Moroccan marinated lamb rumps with a couscous salad and accompanied with the broad bean feta watercress and toasted pumpkin seeds. And very naughtily using my hand, stunning. Don't need sauces, don't need heavy dressings. Let the meat talk for itself. That couscous that we tasted earlier, stunning, pungent. And then the meatiness of the broad beans with the watercress. You have got to make this. It is an absolute beaut.